What do I have up my sleeve? A gun. <laughs> Sorry. They say that your interests change as you get older, much like your taste buds. And for the last couple of years, a new interest, maybe interest is not the right word, a new fascination has been growing inside of me. And that fascination is clowns. Don't leave. This isn't a video about scary clowns or even carnival clowns or the history of clownery through the ages. I just like clowns. So this is a video about me, a full grown adult with a sewing machine that I barely know how to use, trying to be a clown for Halloween. We'll start with Halloween. So in the film, Tonight is Ours from 1933, the starlet Claudette Colbert sports this amazing Harlequin getup to a masquerade ball in the very first scene. The sparkles, the ruffles, the shoes, I must have them. So let's make it happen. I'm gonna attempt to make this costume for myself and we will see where we land. So I have a shoddy plan for how I'm gonna make everything, starting with the collar. I've been wanting to make one of these ruffle collars for a long time, just to have on hand in case I felt like an outfit needed an extra pop of personality. In reality, this is just a tutu meant for an 18 month old and it was super easy to make. All I used was a stretchy crochet band and some tool and I'll make sure to link the tutorial I used in the description box in case you wanna join my casual clown army. Moment of truth. Oh, I just realized I didn't actually try to put this headband over my head. I have a huge head. It's not a bad thing. Just the way it is. Anyways, hope this fits. Oh, we're good. Like a glove. Wow. This changes things. Just call me drama clown. I like, this is the new me. Onto the blouse. So I'm gonna use this shirt that I already own. Ow! Wow. Real time reaction to getting stabbed in the hand. Okay, let's try this again. I'm gonna use a shirt that I already own to make the front and back pattern for my blouse. I'm gonna be making it out of literally a curtain from the thrift store. I also have some shiny silver trim that I will use to make that cool diamond pattern. I'll sew that onto the fabric before we put the shirt together and hopefully this turns out well. Like I said in the beginning, I'm just a woman with a sewing machine that she doesn't know how to use. So I've never really made a shirt from scratch before. And luckily the original shirt seems pretty simple from the movie. It just has big sleeves, which are surprisingly easy to make. All you need is a big tube of fabric with a little channel added at the end that you can string elastic through. Easy with a big payoff. And that is the kind of sewing that I like and am capable of. Oh yeah. Oh, you know when you just have a really good eye itch. Ooh, anyways, this is going very poorly. First of all, the ribbon that I got that was supposed to cover the whole shirt covered a fifth of it, probably. I'm just not gonna worry about it. It's gonna turn out how it turns out. Yeah, I was not able to salvage that silver diamond pattern. I'd need way more silver trim next time and sewing the slippery ribbon onto the slipperier fabric, not very fun. Anyways, I really like how this shirt turned out, silver ribbon or not. I just wanna wear it in the normal times and the clown times. Your girl's got sleeves. She's got sleeves for days and nights cause it's like, 11.30 p.m. on a Thursday. Oh, it's actually midnight, so happy Friday. <laughs> I'm gonna put elastic in this sleeve so it looks like this sleeve, and then I'm gonna go to bed. Love you, bye. What do I have up my sleeve? A gun. <laughs> Sorry. It's day two. I just woke up. We're gonna work on the leggings, which requires some heat transfer vinyl. And I don't really know how it's gonna go. So let's find out. Here is the vinyl I'm gonna use. I had to just choose a dark sparkly color because the pictures are obviously in black and white. So I'm like, all right, they went for green. 
That feels very like jestery harlequin to me. So I'm gonna figure out what size diamonds I need and then hopefully like try and cut this as efficiently as possible. I looked up a tutorial on how to cut out fabric for quilting, so hopefully that can help me. But uh, pray for me. Was I expecting to use math for this video? Absolutely not. Turns out cutting a bunch of perfect diamonds requires some very big brain energy. But I had the lovely Susan Claire from the Gourmet Quilter to hold my sweaty little paw the whole way through. I'll link her diamond pattern tutorial below. Thanks, Susan. Ah, uh, every good project includes a coffee break. So let's take one together. You know, this project has been really enriching because it is completely for fun. It kind of feels like I'm making dress up clothes for the land of make believe, but as an adult. I mean, kids run around in superhero costumes all the time. So why can't I? Maybe that's kind of what cosplaying is. Anyways, sometimes the best thing to do to take care of yourself is to just follow the fun and don't be so hard on yourself with the final result. If you're exploring, you're learning. And if you're learning, you're growing, baby. And that is the gospel truth. And drink some water while you're at it. As I look down the barrel of cutting out another 30 of these diamonds, I'm comforted to know that if this costume doesn't work out, at least I learned that my cutting mat has angles on it, and they're helpful when cutting out said diamonds. That's all. Hi. It's been a week since I last filmed. Life just had other things in plan for me this past week, so I'm gonna still try and get this up before Halloween. We can do it. We can do anything. If this video exists, it means I did it, so. Manifestation. It's time to uh, 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 iron. One thing that I just realized is that leggings are stretchy. Vinyl is not. Is this gonna work? I guess we'll find out in three, two, one. This is boring. It worked, although I haven't peeled off the plastic yet because I want to hit it again with heat. It also didn't really think this one through, folks. Um, oh well. So I'm currently making the pom-poms for the shoes, and I've had a lot of time to think about the why of this project. It is the Halloween season, but I do not have a specific place or party to wear this costume to. So how can I immortalize this project? besides making a YouTube video about it and begin my campaign for world clown domination. Well, I'm gonna turn it into a fashion illustration, a la this. Basically, I'm gonna take some photos in the costume and use those staged photos as the backdrop of a digital collage slash painting slash multimedia extravaganza. It's kind of complicated. Either way, I'll have a really cool art piece to put in my portfolio or just to save forever. And I think that will help me just feel like this was all worth it. So after I finish these two pom-poms to put on my little tootsies, I need to take those staged photos, which means I have to do vintage makeup. And then we'll jump into Photoshop and see what we can, what we can do. This makeup look is really simple, just a red lip and some darkness around the eyes. I'd love to actually try gluing down my brows and penciling them on someday to really nail that old Hollywood look, and maybe I'd finally know what it's like to have symmetrical brows. I know, I look crazy. Um... <laughs> I need to brush out my bangs, put on my whole get up, and let's take some photos. I don't hate these bangs. I think we're gonna have to puff these guys up in post-production, but we're probably gonna have to do a lot in post-production, huh? It's time for the lights. It's time for the camera. Let's bring in the clowns, baby. I based my poses around the promotional photos from the film, but of course I wanted to take my own spin on things. I added a mirror in the corner to match said promotional photos, and I'm realizing that that means that you can see the back of the leggings where there uh, are not any diamonds. 
I just didn't think it was worth the time, okay? Luckily, we can fix that pretty easily in Photoshop. I think I got all the still shots that I need. Is this frightening? I feel like this shot is frightening. <laughs> There's so many shots in this video where I'm just looking at myself and laughing. I feel absurd in the best way. Feels right and wrong at the same time. Anyways, I'm gonna go jump into Photoshop. Let's see what pictures we can use and let's get digital collaging. I'm excited. Okay, let's get to Photoshop. Oh, I'm gonna put on something more comfortable. Be right back. Okay, diving in and three, two, one, go. So we have a bit of an issue, folks. The footage and photos that I got are not super crisp. They're pretty blurry, so there's a lot of work that has to go on in the back end to really make this look good. But luckily, I was planning on doing pretty heavy editing and adding my own paintings and illustrations into it. So this is the original. You can see, pretty blurry. But we are, we're getting somewhere. It's looking very painterly. It still looks pretty pixelated, but I'll figure it out. I'll keep noodling on it. I've got dumplings to help me feel better. Here is where the digital rubber hits the digital canvas. And like I said in that previous clip, these photos were not in focus, but never fear. I'm using new layers to paint directly on top of the photos to create a quasi mixed media vibe. So this allows me to sharpen things up and add things as I literally paint them in. For example, I basically repainted the entire face of the full body photo and then painted in the remaining diamonds on the leggings. I also fluffed up those shoe pom-poms because they needed some help I'm trying to match the color schemes across both pieces so that they'll feel like a collection when they're side by side. And although I originally planned for these to be black and white, like the original photos from the movie, I just cannot stay away from the bright colors. I guess that's the clown blood that flows through my clown veins. Anyways, what do y'all think? Do you prefer the black and white? Do you like the color? Let me know in the comments. And here we are! The two mixed media photo paintings, that is a mouthful, are done and I'm super happy with the result. I've never made props or a costume to use in a digital piece, and I really love the sense of reality that it brings to an otherwise very otherworldly scene. I've always loved costuming and set design, and I think I'm gonna inject more of this practical magic into my digital work going forward. That also means that I get to build my very own collection of dress-up clothes, and I don't know why that idea tickles my fancy so much, but it is a rabbit hole that I am going to explore. I hope this circusy Halloween video wasn't too spooky for all of y'all with clown phobias. If you'd like to see my designs up close and personal, come check them out on Instagram and drop me a comment while you're there. You can find me at Kathleen Illustrated pretty much everywhere. And if you like this video and would like to see more thrifty, artsy videos in the future, or you just want to see my cute dog, then please subscribe if you'd like. I appreciate you and I love you, and I will see you next week with another video. Ta-ta for now!